Hello everyone, I'm Juan Montesinos, one of the authors of SOLOS, a dataset for audiovisual music analysis. Thank you for attending. Music audio analysis is a very extensive field with many, many tasks. Today, I want to show you with a very simple example how computer vision can help music audio analysis. So tell me, which instruments can you hear? It's hard to say being a lay listener, two instruments maybe, string instruments? Yeah, it could be, but still difficult to say from audio only. So let's use computer vision. And they are two violins. Wait, are they violins? Because mm, the timbre of both is slightly different, so we have two different sounds, similar looking. Are they violin and viola? Yep, that's it. And with this very silly example, I have illustrated how computer vision can help music audio analysis. But the other way around too, because classifying these instruments could be really challenging from computer vision using frames. And what's the moral of this? That music audio analysis and computer vision can work together in audiovisual analysis. That's why we represent SOLOS, the dataset of people playing instruments. SOLOS comprises of 755 recordings across 13 categories of YouTube Gather videos. We have made solos to match the same categories as the Rochester dataset, which is a small, high quality dataset of audiovisual recordings. This way, you can train your model on solos and evaluate in Rochester dataset in a real world scenario. We do not only provide videos, but we do also provide open post based skeletons, interpolating the open post mispredictions to improve your training stability. Think of what can you do with the skeletons. You can localize any part of the body. You can filter out the stamps as you need. You can crop around the instrument or the face, reducing the overfitting. But why do we interpolate? Well, when a pose fails to detect a length, it sets its coordinates at zero, 00. This produces an instability. Why? Because the network is seeing a smooth signal and suddenly everything goes to zero. This means high gradients, high acceleration, high velocity. And how do we interpolate? The simple, the better. Linear interpolation, but we we'll use a trick. We interpolate in relative coordinates, and here is why. So let me recap some key ideas. Skeletons are tree like graphs. This means that each node in the graph has a single parent and that the whole graph emerges from a single node. Remind that the absolute position of a joint can be calculated from the absolute position of the parent plus the relative position of the child with respect to the parent. This way, we can ignore the error induced by inferring the drag velocity. But what does this complex sentence mean in practice? Well, imagine that OpenPose has failed to predict the position of the finger. If we interpolate the position of the finger with respect to the origin of coordinates, we could be introducing some error given the fact that the finger moves with the body. However, interpolating in relative coordinates means that we are interpolating the position of the finger with respect to the beginning of the finger as if this point were fixed. This way, the interpolation is less prone to errors and keeps coherence. Let's see an example. On the left, we are going to see non-interpolated row open post predictions, and in the right, we are gonna see some interpolated predictions. When everything goes to green, means open post has failed to predict the, that limb. As we can see in the example, it's really common that some open post fails to predict something. And the interpolated version is really stable, predicting a very plausible position for the hand and keeping the coherence. So thank you for watching, and if you're interested in solos, the dataset, please visit juanmontesinos.com slash solos.